Ah, well, I think you can cross another wide receiver coach candidate off your list. Leonard Hankerson, he ain't coming. You are Locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am Alex Dono, your host. I'm a University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet and contributor to allhurricanes.com. And thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. So as reported last night by Gary Furman of Kane Sport, Leonard Hankerson has decided to stay in San Francisco. And apparently the 49ers have taken care of him, if you know what I mean, uh, to make sure he stays as the 49ers wide receivers coach. Uh, it's our understanding here on Locked on Canes that Hankerson uh, interviewed at least twice for the University of Miami wide receivers coach job. I think the first of those was more of an informal interview, but late last week on Friday, he had a formal interview. And so it sounds like Hank is staying and it's understandable guys. Uh, it's disappointing, but it's understandable uh, because when you're ascending through the NFL coaching ranks, you may not want to leave that sort of a situation. And also you don't have to be recruiting there 24-7 in the National Football League the way you do in college football. So uh, I'm very excited to bring on first-time guest here on Locked on Canes, but you may have seen this man and heard from him before. Very, very dear friend, and he's been around the Miami Hurricanes program for maybe more years than he would even care to admit. Bruce Warner is with us. Bruce, how many years do you go back uh, following and covering this Miami Hurricanes program? 40-plus Oh, 40 plus. Wow. 82, 83, 81. Yeah. And time, time, time timed very well with the start of the glory years, too. Exactly. Exactly. Right after Jim Kelly left. And yeah, then it just, you know, it just took off. And then it's kind of drifted downward the last 20 years, which is it's hard to explain. And it was certainly hard to live with. But it happened. And here we are in 2023 already. And we're still looking for something to get us back where we belong, is what Miami yeah. fans say. We belong there, but we're not there. Yeah, we're, we're not there yet. And by the way, a couple of other quick coaching notes before Bruce and I dive headfirst into this wide receivers coach situation. Uh, reported uh, by both On3 and 24-7 that Miami interior defensive line coach Joe Salavea interviewed for a job with the Detroit Lions, but he did not get it. So he's still, at least for the time being, Coach Joe is still part of the Miami Hurricane staff. And there's been some buzz about Jason Taylor, who I hope ends up promoted at Miami to become the defensive ends coach. But there's some buzz linking Jason Taylor to a possible job with the Miami Dolphins, which would be hard for him to pass up. And, you know, Bruce, I think one of the factors here when we talk about it, it's not just at Miami because Florida just lost a bunch of coaches from their staff for NFL jobs. Uh, this tweet, from 24-7's Josh Pate really speaks to me when he talks about all these coaches that have been leaving college for the NFL. Uh, Josh tweeted, from a coach who recently opted for NFL over college football, if I take a job in the league, I can go to sleep at night knowing the GM is handling the salary cap, roster management, and the draft. In college, that's all on me and on the personnel department. And especially if you work for a guy, Bruce, like Mario Cristobal, there's a lot of 18 hour days being worked by coaches on his staff. Oh, I don't have the answer to those questions, but I do have an opinion, obviously. And that's part of it. The 18 hour days and the stress and the pressure on him, the, the, the coach, the family, and so on and so forth may be too much. And if you have an opportunity to go to the league, why not? Yeah. I'm, and I'm not, I'm not saying it's just Mario, but that's the, that's the nature of it. Now, now you got to throw in, the NIL. So as great as Mario is and was as a recruiter, he has to deal with these other issues now. I've got this guy locked up. I have this guy locked up. I have this McLean locked up. No, you don't. Yeah. No, you don't. So somebody pulls the rug out from under you. So it's become really difficult to be in a position where you say, this is going to be my roster. I've got this guy and that. Look at Antoine Jackson. Gone. Yeah. You know, so you can't count on anything anymore. Who wants that? Yeah, no, it, it, it's it's really a tough sell. And so now if we can assume 
Leonard Hankerson is out of the running for this. Um, yeah. You know, the other potential top candidate who also interviewed for the job late last week. Now, as we've come to find out, interviewing for the job doesn't necessarily mean you actually want the job. Right. But Kevin Beard, who played wide receiver at Miami, won a championship in 2001, was actually a wide receivers coach at Miami uh, for a year under Al Golden before Mark Richt came in. And he's doing really good things over there at Toledo. He works on Jason Candle's staff. Kevin Beard reportedly interviewed for this job last Thursday. Um, so maybe by process of elimination, he's the top candidate now. We know, Bruce, that Mario casts a pretty wide net, so there could be other candidates out there that people aren't talking about. I mean, would you like Kevin Beard for this job? And, and what are your thoughts on now this ongoing wide receiver coach search? Well, listen, I know Kevin, and he's told me he really wants this job. He Ooh. would like to have this job. But it's not his. It's not his call. Right. It's not his call. Right. Um, he's he's willing to recruit and bust his behind because he wants to come back here. He told us that a few months ago too. But again, it, he's not scared of recruiting. But he has not recruited this hotbed. Where is he? Up in Toledo. He's in Toledo. Um, it's not the same. But he did work at Miami before, though, Bruce. Yes, he worked there before, but not under something like this where you right. get your ass. Go, you know, we we can't have this. Um, so, you know, I think Kevin would be a solid, solid wide receiver coach. I like him a lot. I don't know who else he's got in the mix. I know there's been talk about Lamar, who's my client, but I'm not going to talk about what I know about that. I just won't. Yeah. It's not my call. I'm not going to get in the middle of what Mario's doing or isn't doing. I know there's been some questioning of LT but I don't know anything more than that. And I won't even speculate on it. So, so let me tell so, you that there wasn't, yes, there was an interest in, I don't know where he stands right now. And if I did know, I still wouldn't say, cause he's my father. <laughs> <laughs> no, let me ask you a fault. So, so that, that's about Lamar Thomas. Let me ask you a follow up on Kevin Beard. Uh, do, do you know if he's been offered the job? I don't know if he's been offered. Okay. I haven't okay. spoken to him in the last week or two. Okay. Okay. No, like he's text him but I, I don't want to do that either i don't want to get in the middle of this yeah. this is mario's doing it's not mine i have opinions and i have thoughts but i'm not going to interfere with his process because he, he doesn't like it i know right. he doesn't like right. it so i'm not going to even speculate i'm not going to say bruce said this i'm not going to do it <laughs> so i hope he gets the job hell yeah i like him yeah obviously yeah, be but if he found somebody else that he thinks will do the job i gotta trust in him now let's just take it a step back a year we all trusted what he was going to do last year. And look what happened. It blew up. It blew up. He had the so-called superstar staff. And what happened? I don't think those guys were meant to be coaches for Mario Cristobal. Right. I, I don't, don't think so. I mean, Steele's gone. Gaddis, all I can tell you is if. Oh, hey, Bruce is back. Sorry, Bruce, I lost you for a second. So, you know, we were just talking about um, how things didn't really go right last year with an all-star staff. Yeah, well, it was more than just the staff. You know, I had heard from some of my former player friends, which you know you know that I know, and they were telling me that Mario was telling them as far back as last April, oh, my God, I, I can't believe what I'm seeing here. This team is nothing like I expected. And that was work ethic, work ethic. Work ethic wasn't there. And he knew right from the get-go there was players he had to weed out. And he's doing it. He did it in the offseason. He's probably not done. But he knew this wasn't going to be easy. And I guess he figured these coaches would get these guys to do what they had to do. But that didn't work either because there was a, a lot of confusion. I mean, when I had heard that Gaddis hadn't spoken to Tyler Van Dyke after the first two or three games during the week to prep for the upcoming game, who does that? How could you do that? How does he know what this kid wants to do and what he wants to throw? You don't talk to him. Right. So there was a mess. And, th and you could see he's weeded out a lot of these guys. And there may be even more to go. But uh, I'm happy with the guys he's brought in. If you want to throw names out, I'll answer the questions about these guys. Well, okay, let, let's start with the coordinators. Uh, Lance Guidry, who you know did really good things in Marshall. And sh he's the new defensive coordinator. Shannon Dawson uh, from Houston. You know, people are excited that he can hopefully reinvigorate the passing game a little bit. What do you think about the new coordinators? Well, you have to you have to take a step back and look at this because does he have the horses? The right. defense guy. So I've been saying all along, and I'm not going to change my opinion unless and until they get a defensive tackle or tackles that could dominate the line of scrimmage. 
like guys like Jerome and Cortez, the late Cortez and the late Jerome, and Sapp and Russell Maryland, and you know guys that could collapse that pocket, Mark Caesar, guys like that. They're not. They're going to have struggles because the linebackers are not freed up to roam around and make tackles. They're going to have a hat on them almost every time. And that's why you see our DBs and safeties making tackles all over the place. You know, it does. It's not the front four is not always about pass rush. So they, they need to get some, and I don't know if they have a defensive tackle that I'd be scared of if I'm the opposite team's uh, offensive coordinator. Certainly not. Um, And as far as the offense is concerned, the guy could be a genius. (laughs) Tell that offensive line gels. With what? With an injured Rivers and injured Zion Nelson. You got Lee from UCF. That's good. You got Cohen from Alabama. That's good. If those two guys that are hurt are able to play, and then you could, and then you have Inez Cooper and the two young kids. That's an offensive line. That's seven guys right there that you could plug in, and they could, and they could do better. The run game, the passing game. But it, so it doesn't matter what calls are being made by the OC if they can't execute it because the quarterback's getting killed or there's no room for the running backs to go. It doesn't matter, and that's that's going to fall on the offensive line coach. And that's to me, that's the key to the offense this year. I don't care how much skill you have. One hundred percent. I think Mario would agree with the way he's been addressing the offensive line. I want to get more into what we're looking forward to from spring football, which starts in just four days, which is crazy how fast time is flying by. And I yeah. want to get Bruce's take on the new running backs coach who, you know, uh, Tim Harris Jr., near and dear to all of our hearts. So keep it locked right here to Locked on Canes. And guys, I hope you've been enjoying Built Bars in this new year. If you're looking for a delicious treat, but you don't want all the fat and calories, you got to try a Built Bar. Just got through the holiday season. I know my goal has been to eat a little healthier this year. So if you're like me, where you want to eat healthier, but you don't want to compromise taste, I've got just the thing for you. You got to try Built. With Built, healthy is actually tasty. Seriously, they're so delicious, you won't think that they're good for you, but they're perfect for that New Year's resolution. What makes Built Bars so good? Well, for starters, folks, they are covered in 100% real chocolate. That's right real chocolate and they come in unbelievable flavors like churro peanut butter brownie coconut almond my favorite cookie dough chunk puffs are back for a limited time so get on that i'm not sure how built does it but these bars taste like a candy bar while maintaining amazing macros only 130 calories just four grams of sugar and a whopping 17 grams of protein and now you don't even need to wait around to get a box for years we've been talking about ordering your built bars at built.com which you can still do with our promo code locked on 15 for 15% off. And now you can also get built bars at your local Walmart or Sam's club. That's right. Head into your nearest Walmart or Sam's club today. Grab a 13 bar box with our hit flavors like brownie batter and churro. And you can thank me later because I love me some built bars. Thank you so much for making locked on canes. Your first listen today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. Bruce Warner is with me here on locked on canes. Who's, been around the program since the early 80s and you know I feel like Bruce this is it attorney week on locked on canes because we had Darren Heitner on attorney at law yesterday we're actually gonna be talking with another attorney later this week so this is like attorney appreciation day here on the locked on podcast network and you know Bruce I thank you for taking the time and uh, and you've had a chance to uh, to represent a number of Miami players over the years yeah um I don't think I'm gonna throw any names out but yes a lot of them a lot of them, yes, and that have gotten in trouble, and one of whom got in trouble right before the Cotton Bowl game against against uh, Texas back in '91, and I got him back in the game. I, I feel good about that. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and, I, and my buddy, and he doesn't care that I say. It. My friend Mark Caesar, who's from Newark, which is my hometown, he's gotten in trouble, oh, wow. and I, I bailed his ass out. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that is that is hilarious. He, he, <laughs> Oh man! So I mean, he he's so crazy. He says that I should be in the in the Miami Hurricane Hall of Fame for all the guys I got out of trouble. <laughs> probably should. I mean, if if they told me that they were opening a Bruce Warner exhibit in that, I think it's called the uh, the Tom Kern Sports Hall of Fame. I've been in there a few times before, but it's been a minute. If they told me they were opening the Bruce Warner wing, I would go right back into that Hall of Fame, which is free, uh, by the way. I'll, I'll just tell you off the air who it is and what happened. But anyway, <laughs> but you know, I remember you, you were talking yesterday about the off season acquisitions and things like that still didn't really get a blue chip wide receiver which is what right. i thought was going to happen it hasn't happened yet i don't know if it's going to happen um like i said they, they got some dbs 
I, I'm, I'm excited about those guys. I, I, I just don't know. You, know, you can ask me about the defense. It's, is it going to be improved? I don't know. Sure. I'm not going to sit here and say, well, they got a few new guys and they got a new coach. It's going to be great. I don't know because they don't have the D tackle. The linebackers, if they do play, are going to be inexperienced uh, at that position, especially playing as a unit. Mm -hmm. it's not Armstead, Barrow, and Darren Smith playing for three years together. It's just not. Same thing with the secondary. You know, and I keep seeing stuff about about um, Kinchins and, and, and Williams. Williams, what has he done in the two years he's been here? I'm not knocking the kid, but he doesn't seem to be making the plays that you would expect a five-star to make. He's not doing it. So when you look at the defense, yeah, there's bodies and there's names. There could be a different scheme, which may help a lot. I'm assuming it will, but I don't know. I just don't know. And I'm not, I can't answer the offensive question. I did before. Yeah. I don't care who this guy is. Unless that line gels, they're going to be struggling. you got to keep people off of Tyler Van Dyke. He needs to be able to throw and run and make plays and, and you know, be in a rhythm. There's no rhythm. Every five seconds is an offside, a false start. There was never a rhythm last year. Even in the games they did well, they didn't look that good. So there's a lot of work to be done in this offseason. Although I have high hopes, but I'm not going to sit here like I've done for 40 years and predict 10 and 2, 9 and 3. <laughs> uh, right. I, anybody who does it is foolish right now. Yeah, I'm right there with you on that. I, I've said it. I, I have retired from the predictions game, Bruce. I mean, I, I said it uh, to Joe Rose this morning. He had uh, me as a guest on his show. I've said it probably a thousand times in the last couple of months here on Locked on Canes. I am out of the predictions business. Um, but, you know, you, you brought up Tyler Van Dyke, and you're you're correct that if he can't get protection, he can only go so far. Um, but I'm curious, just your opinion on Tyler Van Dyke's skill set, because, Bruce, let, let's just for the sake of argument, let's assume the protection, the protection does get better this year. Let's say Zion Nelson can stay healthy, and if he is healthy, he's your starting left tackle – and J.B. on Cohen and Matt Lee are excellent additions. And then you've got Jalen Rivers. You've got guys like Samson Okunlola and Francis Maui Goa, who I believe can at least play a rotational role oh, as absolutely. true freshmen this year. Um, what do you think Tyler Van Dyke's ceiling is? Like, if Tyler Van Dyke can actually get some pass pro, what do you think his ceiling can be in this offense? Well, you have to look at what he did the year before last in the last six games. You can't ignore it. It wasn't a fluke. It was for real. Um, and he had Rambo, and he had Harley, and he had a healthy Restrepo. So last September, he comes out in the first game, and none of those three guys are there. So what do you expect? Um, so I think the kid is definitely draftable. If he reverts back to that late 2021 form, I don't see him going any later than the third round. The kid has the guts of a burglar. He reminds me a little of Jim Kelly. He can run if you ask him to. He's, he's got a good arm. He's not stupid. Um, and, and, you know, but you need weapons. I think he's definitely draftable, not after last season. There's no, no world. Yeah. But if he stays healthy, and I don't know what happened with the shoulder. I don't know the extent of it. I don't even know if whether he gets hit again, he's going to be finished. I don't know because they kept that all a secret. But I'm assuming he's healthy. I'm assuming he strengthened his arm and whatever injury he had because I had rotator cuff. I know the worst of the worst. So, um, but I think this kid is really good. And if the offensive line, as you say, does gel, I don't think there is a limit for this kid or this. Wow. I think the offense could be unbelievable. But again, I, I'm not going to say it because I know nothing about blocking in the offensive line. And I just want to see it before I open my mouth. I want to see. Now, what about the second quarterback, Jakari Brown, who got some burn last year? Uh, how much potential do you think he has? And, and of course, he, he needs to work on his passing. Seriously. He, he but... needs to work on his footwork in that pocket, too, because mm. he just takes up. But before we do that, I'm shocked they didn't get another backup quarterback. Yeah. I thought they'd have somebody come in who was a junior or a senior or a graduate senior that if something happens to Van Dyke, their season's not over. I can't sit here and tell you that you're Corey Brown unless he's significantly better, which I think he probably would be. You know, he's, he's not scared anymore. He's not looking to take off the minute the, somebody, his first guy is not open. Those are the things he has to learn. And I think he does have a very high ceiling. I think he could be spectacular. But all these things have to take place. This year, hopefully, he doesn't play that much except in the, the blowout games. Right. He could still redshirt because he didn't shirt last year. That's right. So he could technically, if Van Dyke's healthy, he could redshirt, which would help him a lot. 
but I think he's got a lot of potential because the things he does well, he does really well. But, you know, you have to be able to throw a pass to a wide open Restrepo and not go 20 yards over his head when there's nobody near him. you got to put some air into the ball. So, you know, it's one thing to be able to throw a ball. It's another thing to be able to throw it the way you're supposed to with air under it or you have to throw it on a frozen rope or whatever it is. These are the things that he has to learn. You can, you can practice as much as you want, but you need to face game action. So his scrimmages are very important to him. And then we'll be able to make some sort of a comment once spring practice is over. You know, one of the uh, the coaching moves that Miami made this offseason that I, I really appreciated uh, once the running backs coach, the previous running backs coach, Kevin Smith, departed to go back to Ole Miss. Uh, Miami got exactly the guy that I wanted to fill his role. Tim Harris, Jr., son of the legendary Ice Harris. You know, Tim has high school coaching experience, college coaching experience. He did really great stuff the last couple of years with the running backs at UCF. UCF had a top five rushing attack last year, 228 yards per game. And, you know, he knows the area, can recruit the area. Seems like he's a great teacher and a hard worker. So, you know, obviously, Bruce, this, we can say some of the same things about the running backs room you said about the offensive line. There's some guys who need to stay healthy. Trevante Citizen is coming off an ACL. Don Chaney just has the worst injury luck of all time. They got a couple of exciting freshmen coming in and Mark Fletcher and Chris Johnson and Henry Parrish was, you know, the most consistent guy in that backfield last year. But, you know, how do you feel about the, uh, the Tim Harris Jr. hire and what do you think he can do with that running backs room this year? If I call Tim right now, put him on the show with us, he would whisper because he won't say it too loud. Mirabelle, fix that offensive line. He needs that offensive line. Yeah. You know, I understand. What, I, listen, I trust I trust him. I think he's going to do a great job. But as I said before, and I don't know too many people who should disagree with me, that offensive line is everything to this team. Yeah. And because they're so young. They have experienced guys between Lee and Cohen and, and Zion and Rivers. That's four really good ones. But two of them we know aren't going to be in the spring. So – the other kids are going to have to step up. It may even be a blessing that these kids get to play on the first unit in the spring. And then let's see how these injured guys come around, you know, in the summertime and get ready for fall practice. So, but I like, I like the, the dynamics of Harris. I, he's going to get these kids more involved in the passing game. I don't know if you watched any of the things I did last year, but I was screaming for a screen. Please yes. screen. Yeah. You know, what is, what, what does Saban do? Screens. What are this, these guys screen, screen, no screens. How do you how can you coach the offense and knowing they're coming after your quarterback and not call a screen is beyond me. Yeah, and no. if you check the film, how many screens were there? Yeah. Not so, not enough, that's for darn sure. Not enough. And you can't you can say, well, why didn't they put Rooster out there? Well, you know, by the time Rooster gets the ball, the quarterback's dead. He's getting already <laughs> on the ground. So they they really have to work on that offensive line. And and I know Mario's gonna want them to be very physical. Very physical. Yeah. He's a lot less worried about the passing game with Van Dyke than he is with the running game with these young guys because they have they have studs in the backfield and they have studs on the line, but they're not they haven't played one down together yet, not one. Even if you even if even if uh, Zion and Rivers are healthy, between Lee and Cohen, they haven't played one down together yet, and that's what takes time. You know, I've talked to Leon, I've talked to Claude, I've talked to. Bryant McKinney, you have to have a unit. They have to be a unit that gels together, not five guys with names on their uniforms. That doesn't matter. They got to. They have to learn how to block and what each one is doing and trust. They have to trust the guy next to him. Uh, that's beautifully said. Um, I'd like a, a big picture thought from you since you've been around the program since 1982. Um, you know, the the job that Mario Cristobal has done to this point, what he's working on, and also Bruce, are you concerned by the fact that Miami is having so much coaching turnover? Like I know on the one hand I can say, well, five and seven last year, maybe you needed to really turn over this staff, but you know then you you've had to replace running backs coach, offensive coordinator, quarterbacks coach. You're working on uh, replacing a wide receivers coach, defensive coordinator, linebackers coach. Uh, defensive ends coach. We'll see if the interior defensive line coach sticks around because he interviewed for a job in the NFL, didn't get it. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, are you just are you concerned about like all the moving parts in the direction of the program right now? Truthfully, no. I think that Mario had to get rid of a lot of these coaches, and I think he knew it. 
Yeah. I knew he, I knew way back when there was some players he had to weed out of here, a lot of them, like 30 of them. Yeah. So I'm looking at this. This is his second year, but I'm not putting a label on it or a number on it. I think that there made progress, even if they went backwards, so to speak. I don't think they went backwards. I think they got young guys that are dynamic, that'll be able to get to these kids and make them work hard and not feel like, well, you know, I coached at Alabama for 30 years, so I know what I'm doing. Listen to me. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if these guys connected with the players. So although it's year two, and I do have expectations that we better not be seven, five and seven or even six and six this year, uh, I don't, if they're seven and five or eight and four and they're improving, I just think the sky's the limit because Mario's not going to stop recruiting. And the coaching staff will get used to these kids because they don't know who they are. They know nothing about them. So this could be another one of those real tough years only because they're not coaching. They're not playing as units yet. They're still learning. But I think the upside is incredible. And I no, I'm not going to complain about what Mario Cristobal has done at all. No, not blaming him for hiring these guys. Um, Gaddis, maybe. And I'll tell you another thing. I, I thought about this last night after we spoke. You, know, you look at Gaddis and his offense coming from Michigan. What, what defense, a defensive coordinator, is going to keep safeties back when you have a guy who's not known to be a, a passing offensive coordinator? So they had safeties in the box. They were stuffing the run. They were coming after um, if Van Dyke and, and Ja'Cory Brown. They didn't care. They were not concerned about getting beat deep. Well, with this guy there now, he's got a history with the air raid. You better believe their defensive coordinators are not going to be stepping in the box, eight, nine in the box. It's not going to happen. And if we can find somebody who can get past these guys, whether it's it's Colby Young or whether it's um, Ray Ray or any of these guys, um, you, they're not going to be in that box much longer. So there's a lot to this that I look at as a positive. But it doesn't mean I'm sitting here saying we're going undefeated, ruining the ECC Coles. I'm not going to do that. You know, I, listen, I don't. That kid Drake May is incredible. Oh yeah, he's so good. And, yeah, he's really good. So you know, I'm I'm not predicting anything. Although I am going to predict Florida State's probably going to win the ACC this year. They look really good. I hate to say it. I hate to say it too, but I I think I agree with you. Good. Now, if their quarterback goes down, because he's really he's become so good, it, it's scary that he's this good now. Um, if he goes down, they're in trouble. Yeah. Just like ours. If we if Van Dyke goes down, we're in trouble. But I, I'm, I'm happy. You're asking me the question, the answer. I'm not scared. I'm not worried or concerned at all. I love it. Hey, Bruce, before I let you run, tilt your head so we can all see that hat you're wearing because i got to get one of those. Look at that. that that's the uh, – you were telling me off air, that's the hat version of the Miami Knights uniforms that they yes. never wore last season. Never wore, yes. That is correct. <laughs> Yeah. I love that hat. I just got it the other day as part of my birthday present. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. So you had a birthday within the last couple of days. My son had a birthday yesterday. So it's yep. birthday. Happy belated to you, Bruce. Well, thank you. You've sent something to me. You texted me or Facebook me, but that's great. You know, I got a lot of I got a lot of comments from former players. A, a lot of them all the way back to like uh, um, Kenny Calhoun. And, and and up to uh you know all these guys i know all these guys so i'm getting comments left and right melvin bratton and wow i.e tucker and Stephen mcguire and you know it's just a lot of fun to hear from these guys well, that's fantastic and, it, and some it's, of those guys and some of those guys were in that room that you wanted me to talk about <laughs> like <laughs> die and this one and that one but <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll we'll save the legal issues for another episode bruce warner hey. thank you so much for taking the time my friend enjoy the rest of your day Hey, you know what? It's been a long time since you and I were working at that radio station together. Yeah. Buddy. And, and just, I, I just really like you. And I think you're just a Thank real you so much. good, hardworking young man who really gives a damn. And that's good. I'm, I'm just glad you still refer to me as a young man. Well, you're younger than me. I just turned 69. <laughs> Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm only 38. Although for some reason my my five year old son thinks I'm 40. He tells people I'm 40, so I've, I'm telling him to well, you're cut that out. Into your son. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Well, excellent stuff. And guys, make sure make sure you uh, you keep up with Bruce. He'll be back on the show at some point, I'm sure. And guys, make sure after you make us your first listen, you make Locked On College Basketball your second listen. Experts Andy Patton and Isaac Shade take you through the college basketball landscape in 30 minutes a day, interviewing the biggest name media guys, players, coaches, Locked On College Basketball, available for free. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Odyssey, and on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. We will talk to you again next time on another episode of Locked on Canes, part of the awesome Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.